Hello everyone, welcome back to another great episode of Rehouse Cuisines. Today we've had our first snowfall of the season in Minnesota it, it is cold outside and so I know that the kids coming home, husband coming home, um, want to give them a really nice comfort food. This is what we're going to be making. This is uh, called Kichri and Kadi in Gujarati. This is a Gujarati dish. It's a basic um, rice and a lentil, um, soft, like a rice dish. And then we're going to add like a yogurt uh, curry on top of it. And I'm telling you, these tastes, um, the, the way that we bring the taste together with the curry beads and the turmeric, the um, sour and the sweetness, it's just, it's such an amazing comfort dish. So if you want to learn how to do this, let's go join me in the kitchen. Let's go ahead and discuss all the ingredients. A big shout out to Teresa's Stay at Home Life. She just started her YouTube channel and I know that she's working really, really hard. I will put a link in the description box below so you can go visit her channel and and i also want to do a shout out to zara kermali she's my four-year-old niece and she makes my sister make this at least once in two weeks and my sister follows this uh, recipe religiously and she absolutely loves kitri and kadi so i love you zara here i have two cups of rice one cup of mung dal which is split and i'll talk about that a little bit in a minute but before I do, I soaked this overnight, and you can see here that um, uh, that it's really nice and plumpy. And then we're gonna be boiling this in five cups of water. Where once it gets nice and boiled, I'll show you the process throughout. We're also gonna be doing a stick of salted butter, um, and then we, we're not gonna be adding any more salt. We'll taste it and see, but I don't think we're gonna be adding any more salt. We're also going to be doing a tablespoon of olive oil in here um, and that's going to be when we just start um, cooking it all right so you don't need very much uh, olive oil in here because we are going to be adding that stick of butter in there so now what i want to you can see here that i've got my water pre-boiling which is perfect we'll add the rice and the moong dal inside i have to get my hand in there to get all of it out um, and I will let you know exactly how long it took to get this to the consistency that we wanted. This is going to be on medium high throughout until it is completely cooked through. The water will all disappear and um, everything will become really nice and soft. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer this onto my other stove so I can show you how to do the kadi. But before that, I want to show you that these are the uh, split dolls. They're the they're mung dolls. Now the mung doll is usually whole, right? So you want to use the split ones. And by um, soaking them overnight, it really, really, really works well because that way you don't have to spend so much time in um, boiling it. Now, if you wanted to use the IP for that or the Instapot, that would be great. I'm sure you would have to follow... Um, the um, lentil rest, uh, lentil timings for that, but I have never done this in the um, uh, Instapot, but I should. I should let you know how that goes. But yeah, I just, I'm doing it on the stove today, but if you have an Instapot and you want to use your Instapot, go ahead and do so. so. For my Kadi uh, recipe, this is very, very simple, not too many ingredients, but it turns out super tasty, and this is the way I've been making it for years and years. So let's go ahead. I'm going to show you now what we're going to need. So I have here um, some water and it's hot water that we're going to use to kind of uh, put it in here and thin out the yogurt. I have um, I have one and a half cups of yogurt here. I've got two tablespoons of chickpea flour um, and then I we're going to be using a teaspoon of ginger and garlic. Now to get this uh, curry part of it going we're going to be using a tablespoon to two tablespoons of um, olive oil and then here I have one teaspoon of mustard seeds I have five uh, five to eight leaves of curry leaves and the way I do these is I just bring them from the store I wash them um, dry them a little bit and then I stick them in the freezer and I use it this way and it lasts for a long time I have here uh, um, red peppers now 
Um, you could either pick the dried red chili peppers or you could do cayenne and that's up to how much you want for it to taste, you know, how spicy you want it. And then we're going to be doing half a teaspoon of turmeric. We're going to start with half a teaspoon. If we feel that the color is not where I have it, then we're going to add a little bit more. I have a teaspoon of um, organic coconut sugar that I'm using and we Gujarati people like it a little bit sweet and tart. So if you don't like sweetness, just omit that sugar. And then I have a third of a teaspoon of citric acid to give it that real sour taste. Now this is completely optional. It's something that my kids love. They love the tart tartness of it. So I would not put all one third teaspoon in there. I would add a little bit um, and then add it as you go along uh, when you do the taste test. The thing that I have yeah, noticed is that Every time I buy yogurt, and if it's a different brand, um, the taste is different. Like today, um, like this time when we bought the yogurt, this was um, a grass-fed uh, yogurt, and it's uh, completely organic, and it's it's beautiful. It's, it's very thick, but it's regular yogurt. But it's very, very sour. Like it's, it's, it's got that tart to it. So this is why I said that you will really have to kind of gauge your sourness. Now, um, the other thing is also sometimes the yogurts are um, very, very uh, runny. So that's how you won't add so much water in it because obviously you're not gonna need that much uh, water in it because it's already thinned out. So now into my, in first thing we're gonna do is, I have my stove heating up, so that's okay. I'll put about a tablespoon of olive oil in here all right once this heats up we're going to start doing the curry part of it but so here i have my yogurt you see that in this we're going to go ahead and add the chickpea flour why do we add the chickpea flour a uh, very good question and that is one we're adding a uh, protein in here which is great two we're also doing um trying to get this mixture to thicken up and it will be more of a, um, uh, I would say more of a curry consistency, but it's going to be um, not super thick, but not super thin either, so that when you eat it with the kitchri, it will taste, um, it will kind of collect it together. It's not gonna run all over your plate. What you wanna do at this point is you just wanna make sure that you really, really um, stir this well, now, I feel that this is pretty uh, thick, so I'm gonna add about half a cup of water. Again, please gauge your yogurt and see um, how much uh, water you're gonna need. And then you just wanna beat this really well so you don't have any lumps in it, all right? So I'm gonna keep that on the side. Now let's go ahead and add all our curry stuff in there. So in goes our mustard seeds and We'll just give it 30 seconds for that to start popping. If we did not wait for this to pop and you just started adding everything in there, you got, your curry is going to become bitter because unpopped mustard seeds is what makes your curries bitter. So keep that in mind. Now that you've got the popping going, I'm just going to reduce the heat just a little bit so now I can start adding everything else in there. After the mustard seeds, I am going to go ahead and add my teaspoon of ginger and garlic. Now, I like to cook my ginger and garlic because it gives it a really, really nice taste. So let's go ahead and... And we're flavoring the oil. While we're doing this. So, that's good enough. So at this time, I'm going to go ahead now and add my curry leaves in there, my dried red chili peppers in there, I want that caramelized thing going so I'll add my sugar in there, and then I'm also going to add that little bit of turmeric and let that cook. Now, a lot of you, uh, I have I have a video that I did a very long time ago when I first started doing my YouTube channel. 
and the video is not very good because the lighting is not very good and so I've had a lot of requests to do this this would be great for um, toddler st starting off um, eating too so um, now we have that in there I'm gonna add a little bit of my red chili pepper in there and then I'm going to mix everything here really really well and we're gonna throw that in there as well and you're gonna hear a really good sizzle and that's what you're looking for you see how our oil has um, really cooked up the must uh, the um, turmeric as well and it smells amazing in here it actually smells like I'm making chevro so if you haven't watched my chevro video chevro is um, an Indian Chex Mix and oh my gosh I love that um, although um, it is uh, delicious it just goes so fast in my house so now you can see here that the mixture is still a little bit thick I would say so I am going to add a little bit more water in there, but I'm just going to add it to my cup so I can clean off all that uh, yogurt. Because if you buy organic, you know how expensive these things run. So, okay. so we're just going to stir this a little bit, and I still think it's going to need a little bit more water in there. But I still don't like, I feel like the color is too light. So I'm going to add a little bit more turmeric in here. And if you feel like this turmeric is not going to cook and that it's going to have a raw taste, no, it's not. Because um, we're going to cook this for at least another five, six minutes until it gets nice and thick and everything kind of, all the flavors kind of marry together. So yeah, the turmeric is going to um, taste really, really uh, cooked in here now I've had a couple of people ask why don't I don't put um, cumin seeds in there I don't know I once I started when I was first when I first learned how to do this I didn't put cumin seeds in there so my kids are not very used to me putting cumin seeds in there and I feel like this is perfect so if you want to add anything else into this go ahead and do it but for me I like the base of this uh, gadi and I've got a really good response from that video saying that the kitchen gadi is always a hit in their house. So I'm gonna stir this, I'm gonna let this cook up just a little bit. I'll do a taste test and then I'll show you what this will, is gonna look like. You see how this is just boiling away and I just wanted to kind of show you. And when I did, uh, when I did, um, when I did soak this last night, I did go ahead and rinse it two to three times before I soaked it completely so now what I'm gonna do is I really feel like this step is important so at this time I can see that um, it's it's boiling but I don't want it to boil rapidly I just kind of want it to simmer like that and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put my lid and I'm not gonna close it all the way I'm just gonna keep it a little bit open so the steam will escape but it will still cook up the um, the rice and the mung dal inside so I want to show you here that I did forget to put in the citric acid. I did the taste test right now. It's sour, but it's not as sour as my kids would like it. So I'm starting off with just a little bit from that one third teaspoon. I'm not going to put all of it in there. Now you can see also that my citric acid here is um, got the bigger grains. It's not the powder. So that's why I'm adding it right now because I want that all to melt in there. And then for those all you think that the citric acid is really bad for you, yes, I know. The only one dish that I can think about that I make at home using citric acid is the gadi. So um, I don't use it often enough at all. I maybe you make kitri kiri gadi maybe once in two months, maybe once in three months. So, and mostly I make it in the winter months. So I use it, I use it sparingly. So. Um, I think that's okay. So I, we're just gonna keep this, uh, let this cook for another five to seven minutes, and then I'll come and show you the um, um, completed. You can part. see here that all the water has almost disappeared. So I am going to put in my whisk, and I'm just going to beat it. This is the time you're gonna know that is your um, rice cooked or not, because if you can't get it to completely become mush 
then you might have to add just a little bit more water in there and then again cover it and give it another five minutes. But this actually took about seven minutes and we have our kitchen and it's almost ready. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add, add in the butter and stuff. So I got my butter here and I had it sitting on the stove so it's a little bit um, not like cold, but that's okay. Um, the other thing I also wanted to point out is um, if I were you, I'd do the, I know that my other video, I've done the salted, but if I were you, I would do the unsalted. I only have the salted here because I gave my husband instructions to get me butter, but it was totally my fault that I didn't tell him whether he should pick up salted or unsalted, and he brought salted. So anyways, we're, we're gonna do the salted. Now, I know this is pretty soft, so now I'm just going to put in, now I know what you're gonna say. You're gonna say, a whole stick of butter yeah it's comfort food and I'm telling you this is what makes this kitchen out of this world it is soft and velvety and I wish I could have this but I'm glad that my family will enjoy it and I love cooking for them but guess what I'll still do a taste test for you so that I can cheat because life is all about moderation right so I can cheat just a little bit and give it a taste test. So now after we added our butter in, if you feel, give it a taste test, if you feel that you still wanna add more but, uh, salt in there, go ahead and do so. The only reason I'm telling you to use the unsalted is because you can decide how much salt you want in there. So if you're not eating too much salt, you'll and you find this really salty, there's nothing you can do about it. So that's why I um, highly recommend using unsalted. Uh, butter. So now you see here that our kitchen is completely done. Um, also texture will depend on you. If you like the thick texture, then keep it the way it is. If you feel like you want to do a little bit of a watery mixture, that's totally up to, up to you too. But now, right now it's about 337. My husband's not going to be home till five. We won't eat till six and it's going to sit and it's going to get thicker. So once it get thick once it gets thicker, don't like panic. Just put it on low, um, add a little bit of hot water in there, like maybe half a cup of really hot water. Start off with half a cup, um, let it start heating up really nicely and that's going to soften the kitchen up and then again you will be able to see um, what kind of texture you want your kitchen to be so the kadi is cooking up the kitchen is done let me go ahead and plate this we'll come back i'm going to do a taste test and then i'll tell you exactly how this so tastes. our kitchen kadi it's done i did a little bit of taste test here and there but i haven't really combined the kitchen and the kadi together to have it and i'm super excited because this is the last time that i'll be able to have it today so i'm looking forward to this all right so um also before i dig into this um a card or a link up here showing you uh taking you to another video um that is my carrot condiment and that goes so well with this recipe my kids love it so make sure you check that out so now for the taste test um, what I want to do is you want to mix your kadi and um, the kitchen like this and then now if I had the condiment already made I would have be having it with that mmm oh my god it's so good it's so velvety in my mouth oh no mm. so it's really great because you can serve this with fresh vegetables or the sweet pepper and you know it's like ideas are endless the way you want to serve it but it's super delicious if you try this if you like it please go ahead and let me know in the comment section below if you make your kitchen kadi a different way let me know in this uh, comment section below what you do how you do it but um, this is amazing. So thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Hannah's Cuisines. Hope you can join me here next time with another great video. See you then, friends.